Hello everyone, welcome to another Reaper blog tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about metadata. Metadata is a way that we can describe a sound file without listening to it so that we can find it easier. We can also put in extra information aside from its file name about who made it, uh, when it was made, whose copyright it is, all these kinds of things. I can't claim to be an expert on this topic, but by the end of this, I just want to make sure that you understand that metadata is helpful it's important, it's easy to add, and it's easy to use. So first let's look at a sound file in Finder. And this would be the same as Explorer. We just look at the properties with Command I. In the title, metadata, we have chainsaw, engine, cranking, rattle, and squeak. Turns over four times. So this person put in a bunch of descriptive words separated by commas into the file name. Musical genre, he has it as mechanical. Using the genre tag, he's put in a sound effects category. The author is Thomas Rex Beverly. In the comment, it looks like he has the name of the file name again. These words should be able to be searched in most programs. I just go to my sound library. If I type in chainsaw, it should pop up here. So all those came up there, but what about engine? engine came up as well. So as long as it's in the file name, it can be found. There's also other information, which is not metadata, but sample rate, 24 bit, the duration, copyright is something that is a uh, part of the metadata. Now let's look at what that's like inside of Reaper. So we open up source properties for this by right clicking source properties in this window, similar information, but with a lot more detail. What's important here is BWF chunk. So the description, uh, description, he's used the, um, the name of the file. Now originator is a tag that could be used either for the artist name, the DAW that exported it, or the brand name of a sound library company. And that's different than the artist tag. So iArt is the, um, the BWF artist name tag. So it's the same here because he's put it, the same uh, text into two different fields of the metadata. ICOP is copyright. Uh, the ICRD is the recording date. IGNR is the genre or the category. INAM is the name of the file. And that's the one that we saw earlier as the title. So as you can see, things do get a little bit confusing because sometimes the metadata is seen one way in one program and a different way in another program. Sometimes the same information is in, used in multiple sections of the metadata. Uh, sometimes there's nothing at all. As long as there's something there, most programs will be able to pick it up. When you export a file from Reaper, it's not really going to have anything. So we do need to use a separate program. Before we leave Reaper, I'm going to open up the Media Explorer, and I've searched my database for Chainsaw already. Here's the same file, and you can see the file name. It's quite long. I'm not a big fan of long file names, but that is kind of like a foolproof way to put lots of information, lots of description into a file that can be read anywhere. Title, he's got it as the same thing, but you can see in this other sound library. It's totally different file name versus the title. The album section hasn't been used. Album could also be the IPROD section in Broadcast Wave. So that's something you can use. I do have other sound libraries that do use the album section. You see genre here as chainsaw. You see here as mechanical. In the comment section, they've used the same as the title. And everyone's going to be doing this a little bit different. There's not really a strict standard for that. BWF description, I think we'll see here that the different libraries use different things. So this one here has different information like uh, the comment separated tags. So if I search for idle, this is going to pop up even if idle isn't in the file name or isn't in the, the title tag. It's just different ways of describing the contents of a sound file. And it's most important for 
sound effects libraries fully, even music instrument libraries, I think it's pretty important to have that kind of stuff. If you're only recording sounds for yourself, never sharing them with anyone, you probably don't need to worry about it. But if you ever need to reuse a sound, it's going to be a lot easier to find if you just take a little bit of time to add some metadata so you can instantly find things. So Reaper can read the metadata, but it cannot write it. In Reaper's database, we do have this um, custom tag option, and we can enter in uh, information. So I could just type in chainsaw as an example, and it will add that in to the file um, just within Reaper. So this is just an internal use thing. Just for now, anyways, that's something that uh, we can only search for within Reaper. You can use this tag as anything. You could type in awesome if you want this file to come up whenever you search your sound library for awesome. Let's actually test that theory. Going back to the top of the database, typing in awesome, and just that one file that I tagged with awesome is there. All right, now let's switch over to a free program called BWF Meta Edit. Now I've highlighted the sound that is the same as what we were looking at in Reaper. And you can see there's so many different categories. This program is pretty ugly to look at. But yeah, you can, you can do so many different types of metadata in here. So the description, he's got it as the same as the file name, originator, his name, originator reference, he's put as none. If you hover your mouse over any of these for a second, it's going to show up some uh, information about this type of thing. For artist, he has his name. For the comment, he has the file name. For copyright, he has the library name and his website. I think that's a pretty good idea. The name, again, is there. And ISFT is the software used to create the file. Sometimes originator also shows the DAW name. It just depends on the implementation of that tag. So BWF Medit Edit is a free program, and there will be a link in the description to get that. All right, let's switch over to Soundly. Soundly is another free program. Uh, it's a great-looking program, a really interesting um, sound manager, and it works great with Reaper. I want to show you a bunch of features in Soundly, but this is really just about metadata, so Try to stay focused on that. If we right click and go to edit metadata or press command T, it will show us a small amount of metadata. Really not a lot here, but if you're just starting out with this and you're just kind of making sounds for yourself, this should be enough. Put in your name for the uh, originator. That's going to show up most places. And putting in the description, putting in comment separated tags is probably the best way to do it. Uh, I wouldn't really recommend doing it with the uh, the file name in the description, I would just convert that all instead of chainsaw underscore engine, change that to comma and space separated. That'll probably search much better. And category, you know, just give it a category. Sound effects, mechanical, foley, footsteps, um, any of those sorts of things. One really cool thing about Soundly is that there is a sound effects thesaurus, which will search similar sounds. So if you type in bang, it's going to give you a uh, bang thud, banging on floor, banging floor, banging. Actually type in air, we get airplane, air whoosh, air release. That can help you help you find sounds that, you, that will fit in your project. All right, next thing I want to show you is some websites. Creative Field Recording has a great article, an introduction to sound effects metadata one, the basics. And I'll have a link in the description to uh, send you over to this website. He goes soon to a lot of detail about what is metadata, how do you use it, how it's read, technical stuff, and how it's displayed in different programs, things like that. He's more of an expert on the topic than I am, but just as long as you're using it, I'm, I'm going to be happy. I'm pretty bad about tagging my stuff with metadata. I'm trying to get better, and uh, I think maybe making this video will help keep me on that path. Another interesting website is Cambridge Dictionary. And this page here is describing qualities of sound. You know, maybe you wouldn't use these as categories of sound, um, but if it's a, a door, you wouldn't just call it a door. You, you would describe it. Squeaky door, if there's a certain sound it makes, maybe it's pitched, grating, creaky, 
distortion. These are things that you can use to describe your sounds uh, in the tags um, and help narrow down your search when you have, you know, a thousand door samples. There's also other ones here, um, sounds made by objects, movement, and impacts, thud, thump, thwack. So this is kind of like a thesaurus. This is a thesaurus for, uh, for finding sounds. And Soundly has something like that built in. Reaper doesn't, so I think this website here will help you. A link to that in the description as well. So that's it. Metadata is kind of a boring topic, but it's pretty helpful, uh, especially if you use sound effects and you have a large sound library. It's so important to be able to find your stuff quickly. Hopefully Reaper will update with um, things to do with metadata, being able to enter it directly in the Media Explorer would be great, not just the custom tags that are only used within your copy of Reaper. Yeah, that would be great. So thanks a lot for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon. And visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials. Thank you.